Hi, I'm Scott Denning and I'm a professor of atmospheric science at Colorado State University. Today we're going to talk about the greenhouse effect, how it works, and why it's important for climate change. All of the energy that comes into the earth has to get to the earth by electromagnetic radiation. There's no air outside the earth's atmosphere, so there's no way for heat to get in and out of the earth. It's just a big ball floating around in a vacuum. So the only way we can get energy in and energy back out is through electromagnetic radiation. It's actually waves of energy that come in. Short waves are, are visible to us as light and, and we can feel the sun on us. That's the short waves. And the long waves go back out. The long waves carry the energy back out to space, radiating energy. Just like you feel energy coming off a fire or you feel energy coming off a heat lamp uh, or you can feel heat energy coming off of a hot stove, the Earth is radiating energy back out to space, cooling itself off all the time. The energy that comes in from the sun is not enough to keep us warm here at the surface of the Earth. If that was the only energy we had, believe it or not, the whole Earth would actually be so cold that all of the oceans would freeze solid. The Earth would be just this white ball of ice floating in space. It would be really cold. We wouldn't even be here talking about it because it wouldn't be a habitable planet. It's really lucky for us that we have air. It actually turns out about two-thirds of the energy that warms us up at the surface of the Earth is from the warm air that also radiates these waves. It all came from the sun originally, but some of it gets recycled. It goes up, it gets caught by these little greenhouse molecules and sent back down. We call this the greenhouse effect. The energy comes in from the sun, it goes back out to space, but some of that energy gets trapped by the warm air and re-radiated back down like a bunch of little heat lamps up in the sky. Now you may have heard that, that the greenhouse gas that we hear about a lot is CO2, carbon dioxide. That's actually just a small amount of the air. 99% of our air is not carbon dioxide. It's, it's nitrogen and oxygen, N2 and O2. But N2 and O2 are not very good at absorbing energy. Um, they're both made of two atoms of the same, the same element. So N2, two Ns, glued together with a, with a bond between them. Think of them like tennis balls on a spring or tennis balls on a stick. These waves of energy can come up and hit that ball on a stick molecule and start it vibrating. And the energy is actually then stored in the molecule. So the energy comes up from the earth, hits the molecule and it starts vibrating like woo 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 woo. But then it can unvibrate or de-excite and send that energy back out to the earth it could go wait, 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 woo, 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 and then as it's vibrating slower, that energy comes back out. But there's not a heck of a lot you can do with two balls on a stick. There's just not that many ways for them to move. CO2 is different. CO2 has three atoms. So there's a CO2. And as you can imagine, the CO2 molecule can vibrate just like N2 or O2. It can go wait, 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 woo, 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 woo. But it can also do other stuff. For example, because it's got three atoms, it can go wee woo, wee woo, or it can go bee woo, bee woo, or it can go bee boom, bee boom. And all these different kinds of molecular dances that the CO2 molecule can do will absorb different wavelengths of energy. So because it has all these different varieties of, of dances, or varieties of vibration that it can do up in the sky, it can absorb much more energy and re-radiate it like heat lamps back to the Earth, keeping us warm. So the CO2 is a much more powerful greenhouse gas than O2 and N2 that make up most of our air. Water vapor is another one. Water vapor is H2O. So again, there's three atoms in an H2O. Uh, let's see, this can be the O this time, and here's a couple of H's. But unlike CO2, they're not all in a straight line like this. They're actually bent like this. So the H2O molecule is even better at dancing and vibrating than the CO2 molecule because it can go wee woo wee woo like that, but it can also go beep boop beep boop, or it can do this swinging thing. It can even do handsprings. I, I'm not going to try that here. That would be kind of dangerous. So what does all this have to do with climate change? As you know, when we burn stuff, stuff that's made of carbon like coal, oil, and gas, we react it with oxygen in the atmosphere to make extra CO2 molecules. Each one of those little extra CO2 molecules captures that long wave energy going up, does its little molecular dance, sends it back down. So it's like extra little heat lamps up in the sky that send energy to the surface of the Earth. We've calculated that if you double the number of CO2 molecules in the air, 
it's the equal amount of energy to putting a little kid's uh, four watt nightlight in every square meter of the planet. So that's not a lot, these little four, four watt night lights, but if you put one every square meter on the whole planet, you'd expect that to warm things up. When we say we expect extra CO2 in the atmosphere to warm the surface of the earth, we're saying adding energy to something changes its temperature. You know, we could argue about how much it'll change or when it's gonna change, but the idea that putting extra CO2 in the air will warm the surface is pretty much of a no-brainer. You add energy to something, it changes its temperature. I'm Scott Denning from Colorado State University, talking to you today for Changing Climates.